such a blessing to have Brother Tim with us. Come and you share God's word. Thank you, you can arrange it any way you want to or take it down. I'm not going to do it, Don. That's not a bad idea. Let me get some housekeeping stuff over with. Number one, my voice does not carry real well. And uh, if you really want to hear me, you'll... everybody wants to hear me. Thank you for coming. And let me just say that I've got uh, some uh, new best friends with me, okay? Amen. Uh, the Brits, uh, he is an inspector for the city of Jacksonville, the county of Duval. And be assured, you get your money's worth. <laughs> uh, they volunteer probably more overtime than most people make. Mm. Is that about right? Pretty All right. And uh, still need to get some village business. Seriously, <laughs> thank you for coming. Mm. And I'm going to say this in front of you, okay? My wife has known this couple <laughs> since the Atlantic Ocean was a pub. And uh, when they were young, holding hands in church and all that stuff, my wife was watching. Okay. And seriously, she said, I am so thankful that you're getting to go to their church, their work, because I do not know of a young couple that is that has a greater desire to be drawn closer to the Lord and work as hard as they do. And as you can tell, when you see fruits of the labor, people at the altar doing business with God, I get about as excited as Barney Fife for those two bullets <laughs> I keep talking about. But be assured, the young people in this church really inspires me. Amen. All right, this is the third and last thing I'm going to do while I'm standing down here. I'll all to you. Workday, Saturday, April, March the 18th, the Saturday before the Easter weekend, okay? <clears throat> That's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> and as my pastor knows, I have an affection for seeing the men of the church motivated. That is the most untapped resource in our churches today is our laity. We got preachers, yes. We've got women that are in leadership roles, yes. We have a few deacons, not near as many deacons as there once was because of the criteria and uh, our unwillingness to move some things. Uh, some of us aren't deacons anymore. But when you're involved in Master's Men, which I've served Master's Men in many ways for many years, okay? Yes, I'm an old man. <laughs> but seriously, when you come that Saturday, be prepared. Ready? Need somebody to bring a chainsaw. Need somebody to bring pressure washer. I need, uh, let's get somebody in here with a uh, rototiller. These things, if you don't have, let me know. Uh, you're going to need rakes. You're going to need pressure washers. You're going to need more pressure washers. <laughs> uh, just about every square inch of this concrete out here can handle some pressure washing. And then whenever you get, uh, you think you've got your uh, stuff dug up, I'll bring you a whole bunch of uh, daffodils, okay? Don't have about 10,000 in a yard. <laughs> So these are things, by the way, if you noticed, these are things that fellows can do. If you don't get up here and sing, if you don't get up here and preach, if you don't get up here and or if you don't teach a Sunday school class, you can run, run a pressure washer. You can clean off the top of the building, clean out the gutters, empty some of the stuff that's out there scattered about. Yeah. That is an act of worship. Amen. You're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for Brother Tommy. And you're not doing it to satisfy the inspection department. They may ride by here and shut you down because, anyway, <laughs> seriously. You're doing it because you have the same passion for Christ that the
fellow does that stands behind this sacred desk. Now I'm going to get down to business. Tonight, the title is, you ready? Behave Yourself. Okay. We've got many things in the scriptures that can be done and said to make us behave ourselves, okay? I did not mean squirming and wiggling in church or uh, missing church. I may toy with a few ideas of the sin of omission, sin of commission and all that stuff, but you know better than to think you're going to hang around out there and try to date some girl that never goes to church and then a year or two or three or four or five years later go through some of the things that some of us have been through mm. because you do not take the scriptures serious. Pay attention to mm. while you are behaving. Romans 12. I'm just going to read two verses. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The number one question I always get asked by teenagers is, how do I know God's will? Is he going to say you need to go to truck driver school so you can get to be a truck driver. No. You need to do everything that your rich uncle is doing just so you can have money. No. It does not say in here for us to duplicate somebody else's life. Pay attention, folks, and behave yourself. Number one, if you're taking notes, by the way, there are two kind of people that listen to a speaker. They're the aggressive listeners. They're sitting there taking notes. What did what did he say? Mm. I missed that. What? Yeah, I don't want to miss that. <sighs> then there is the passive listener. Be so glad when he hushes so I can <laughs> hurry up and go down to Dairy Queen or something like that. <laughs> Comprehend this clearly now. When you write notes. That is one of the highest compliments you can pay your pastor, is write notes, point out to him what he said. And then if he said the thing wrong, it's like this morning's Sunday school teacher. Be like the Berea church. Yeah. Check, double check, recheck, check again. And then like Amagos Malcolm Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. Okay? Mm -hmm. I will check you out, buddy. I believe, uh, Brother Brett, that's what you were talking about whenever we were talking. Wednesday afternoon. Man, he kept me out of church. <laughs> I love you, brother. <clears throat> Let's just pretend that uh, you get a letter. And, uh, Carl, I'm going to pick on you a little bit, buddy. That's fine. <laughs> you go to the mailbox tomorrow night when you get in, and I know you work late at night. And you get this letter made out to Garland Britt. And up in the upper left hand corner is G O D. Yeah. God. What would you do? Mm. What would Garland Britt do with that letter? Would he walk by the garbage can like he does all those that want me to vote for? Chuck, no. Look, I know enough about this fellow. He'd get it too. Ooh, just rung my bell, Lord. That's what this is, folks. 66 books, 1188 chapters. The middle chapter, you paying attention over there? <laughs> the middle chapter is Psalm 118. The middle verse is Psalm 118.8, the eighth verse. The middle word in the Bible is L O R D, Lord. Same power in Old Testament as it is New Testament. Amen. You can't find a more perfect book. Got one tonight I'm supposed to give to you. <laughs> hey, you want to know who's behind this family? I have learned. I appreciate you. 
a letter from God. You don't take it lightly. You've got a letter. It is written to you. There's about 40 people. It took over 400 years. God inspired them. I believe in the plenarial verbal, plenarial verbal inspiration of the scriptures. That means that every word has been breathed by God. He said it, and as I told the group this morning, there's not a joke in here. Folks, it's there for a reason. Now, <clears throat> comprehending. Let me ask you a question. Do you know how to worship? Not many people know how to worship. Do you get down on your knees? Not many people do that nowadays. If you do, you're called a Muslim. I told my testimony to Brother Garland and maybe somebody else. But about eight years ago, got down on my knees, I looked just like a Muslim. I put both of my knees on the floor, my hands flat ahead of me, and I cried out, Dear Lord, I just read in the Scriptures and the book of Genesis. It's not good for a man to be alone. And I was tired of being alone. I may be 6'6 six, six and weigh 240 and all that other stuff, but I don't like to be alone. Mm -hmm. That lady that God sent me just a few days later, when we met, it was obviously, mm -hmm. obviously, God ordained moment in my life. And whenever six months and one day later, we got married at that same place. Mm -hmm. Oh, it gets romantic, don't it, girls? Pit a pat, pit a pat. Seriously. How do you worship? <coughs> One morning going to work a few years ago, drove up the side of a vehicle, and this lady was up there. <laughs> Gave her one of those looks, and she did this. <laughs> I didn't say no more. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. It's so refreshing to go to a restaurant and you see people thanking the Lord for their food. Amen. But I wonder if those same people will thank the Lord for that vehicle they're driving in. Thank the Lord for that house they're yeah. living in. Thank the Lord for the new threads they wear ever so often. Thank the Lord for the air they have to breathe. We need to be constantly thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Now, one of the things that's often said to me on the job site, and uh, with Garland, I think we talked about this, uh, but I wish those fellows were here tonight, but can't do it all. Some people think, just too bad to go to heaven. I'm too bad to go into church. I go into church and the ceiling will fall in on me. Not if the city inspectors around here look at <laughs> you. They think they are too bad to go to church. Mm. Wah, 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 wah. They may be macho maniac men, but let me tell you something. There's so much they do not know about your Bible, your letter from God. There's Paul. He was a serial killer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like going fishing. God said, y'all catch him, I'll clean him. God got his flashlight. That was a lot stronger than you and I didn't have the other night. God got his flashlight and Paul got his attention, tapped him on the shoulder, said, Paul, Saul, Saul. Right. Lord, yes. He knew then. There was no joking in this Bible. He knew then that was God. Okay. Then there was Samson. Can you imagine a Samson making a TV show today? <laughs> Oh, man, if you think that bunch of fellows from out in Louisiana, you think there's something, make a TV show about Samson. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The media crowd would be afraid of it because God would be involved. Mm -hmm. They are scared of him. Okay. Then there was Moses. He killed somebody. Yeah. Moses killed somebody. And then there was David. Las Vegas of his era, okay? And he thought he was getting by with it. Rahab, the harlot. Right. That's the sin that we don't like to talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then there was Peter. He lied. 
for Jesus. Yeah. And these yo-yos that sit around and drive a macho pickup and with uh, beer cans rattling in the back of it and with their uh, head looking like it got caught in a tackle box <laughs> and uh, a few other things that they call themselves real macho men. They are too tough to come to church. They are not even a nap back compared to what God did to Paul cleaning yeah. up. Paul wrote a lot of books for God. Mm -hmm. If you think you're bad, I dare you to give your heart and life, mind, body, and soul to Jesus Christ and just trust Him. Yeah. Lord, what are you going to do with my life? Ah, He's not going to tell you. He'll surprise you with things that you never need. Check out Jeremiah. Fetch the Bible. I know you have. I like to pick on certain other people. Who can find Jeremiah twenty-eight eleven? Is that it? Is that the verse that I want? I've got great things planned for you. You got it? What it is? Twenty-eight eleven says, And Hananias spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. I'm sure that's a good verse, but that wasn't what I was looking for. <laughs> I made a, I made a lie for you. Something to that effect. Yes, go ahead. Read it. I can't hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Moses, we know how God used him. He was a lifeguard at the Red Sea. You get that? Moses, the lifeguard at the Red Sea. <laughs> Hollywood has tried, but it's not as impacting as the real story of what Moses did. Amen. Moses just gave it all to God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, David... God himself said, this is a man after my own heart. Hello? After some politician does the same thing, and we make a president out of him. Yeah. Put him on a great list, too. Uh, Rahab. <coughs> Peter. Little white lie. Didn't come back to bite him, did it? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Now, please understand. You've got to do yourself a favor. Number one, start your day off before you raise your beautiful head off that pillow. Do not say amen until you lay your head back down on that pillow that night. You will constantly be in prayer when you are sitting at a traffic light or whenever you are waiting in line at lunch. Thank you, Lord, for having a meal to eat. Mm -hmm. Or whenever you are chomping down on your Snickers candy bar or whenever you are saying greetings to your friends in the morning. One thing I like about where I work, those fellows come in, everybody shakes hand in the morning. Mm -hmm. Shakes your hand. And in our culture, that means... I like you. Mm -hmm. They shake your hand. None of this stuff. Hey, how you doing? I like it. They look you in the eye. The guy that was here this morning. Oh, he was with that. Okay, the other fact. That's not here tonight. He shook my hand, gripped it like a hundred dollar vice, mm -hmm. and looked at me in the eye. And when somebody does that, I look right into the eye because that's a window to the soul. A beautiful sight when you see somebody that has their life together. God wants you to do that. Now then, <clears throat> point number two, we must conform to God's will. Yes. And if you want to, we can go back and research it, but the scriptures that I read fully covers the same thing. Uh, pray. First prayer every morning. I get so tired. I'm not going to say sick and tired, but I get tired of hearing people complain about our young people. Mm. I love them. Bring me a classroom full of 
dick wads that know it all and that they don't, they don't want to sit there and pay attention to anybody. Give me about a minute and a half. I'll get their attention. If I don't, I'll stand up. <laughs> they know I've got their attention. Because those little rascals, they love me. Mm. And speaking of love, let me tell you, wake up in the morning, let your first prayer be, Good morning, Lord, what can I do for you today? That totally turns around this thing that young people have got today that us old folks don't like and that gets the self-centeredness mm -hmm. out of their system. Let's encourage them where they can replace that self-centeredness with something that is positive. Good morning, Lord. What can I do for you? Let that resonate to your daily habits. Thank you. Didn't cost you a penny. <laughs> now, conforming to God's will, <clears throat> fasting. The Bible doesn't say if you fast. It says when you fast. We Americans, we eat for entertainment. That's why so many of us are girthy. Mm. And a friend of mine has a clothing store. He says, Tim, my 38 years in the clothing business, average size now is an XL, where it used to be just an M. i stay clear of that. Let's get too personal. <laughs> Do your job as unto the Lord. What verse is that? Colossians. Colossians got a good verse in it, I'm sure, but I don't remember exactly which one it is. But do your work as though your paycheck is signed by J E S U S C H R I S T. Do your job as though it is for Christ Himself. Saturday the 18th. Just pray for it not to rain that day. Okay. And whenever you get out here doing all these tasks, you're going to have the best time of your life. And uh, who knows, I may bring my forward here over here. <laughs> Draw a crowd on it. Uh, might slow everything down too. But remember, some of the things you need to remember in your life is we are saved to serve. What gets me is some people remind me of a cell phone. You drop the cell phone in the water. You baptize that rascal. <laughs> it don't work no more. Some people come up, give their heart and life to Christ, and they shed a tear or two at the altar. I'm not fussing. I'm just, let's observe this thing and let's don't do it. Let's pray around. Let's pray this through, okay? I like the idea of praying things through. Sometimes tears come in your eyes whenever you're trying to pray through. Lord, I pray fervency. I pray at every degree of fervency I've got that you would heal this certain lady that was taken to the hospital, this Burl's mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. I took her in yesterday. She fell, broke her hip and all that stuff. Praying for that lady. Praying for a lost friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Praying for those fellows on my job site that are from the nation of Sudan. Yeah. And they want to know, who is this Jesus Christ? Where does he live? Mm -hmm. I said, he lives in my heart. Yeah. And if you take a Bible to their homeland... Your head comes off, yeah. okay? Folks, I uh, leave the job site yesterday afternoon. Not as late as we did. But I left the job site yesterday afternoon, and here comes these ladies with the burkers on and all that stuff. This is not the America I grew up in. Things are changing, folks. Hang on for the ride. God's not through with us yet. He's giving us opportunity to serve Him in ways that we've never served before. Amen. Now, Last is communicating God's will. Get ready. You're not going to like this. <laughs> Cleanliness is not next to godliness. Okay? Did you get that? Cleanliness is not next to godliness. It's not what your mother told you. Cleanliness is godliness. Okay? You show me somebody that uh, cleaned up in their life, cleaned up in their manners, cleaned up in their speech, they cleaned up in their physical life, their personal life, their social life, and they want to live a clean life. Condoleezza Rice is one. I wish you could hear her testimony about this. Oh, buddy. She knows the difference. She is a very highly educated lady. 
And if you uh, want a good one, just hang your hat on that. Yeah. Now, in Jacksonville, for this old country boy to come, it has been an experience. We drive well, okay? <laughs> I was just so nice and courteous my first day here. I was listening to that, that crazy phone tell me where I was supposed to turn, and I was turning, and I didn't think nothing about it. I get to the house a couple of weeks later, I get this letter from City of Jacksonville, a picture of back in my car, and they caught me running a traffic light. Just got to go do the right thing. Now, I don't know how old you are, don't know how young you are, but I know you've got enemies. Oh, I've got enemies. People don't like me because I'm tall and bald and that's all. <laughs> or they don't like me because I'm tall. They don't like me because of whatever. I don't care. They go, they, people are going to despise you. As long as you got breath in your body, somebody's going to try to be the little Caesar and conquer you, okay? Love them. Every verse in this book is woven with the fact of love. Folks, when you look at your enemy, don't look at him with disdain. Hello, how you doing? Hey, God died for him just like he did for you. Amen. Now, I'm going to change. I didn't, I didn't speak in an evangelistic way, but here goes my other face. You ready? I have served and mastered men so many ways. Things that I need you to know about because this church would benefit greatly to have a master's men chapter. It is the best friend your pastor could have. It is men that uh, has been described as Christianity with its sleeves rolled up. And there's hardly a Sunday I go to my church and uh, most of them have got my phone number and they don't mind calling me. I've been several hundred miles away from Dothan and I get this phone got Tim, if you got any of your fellows that can come over and rake the pine straw off the top of my house, she's 84 years old, no children. Yeah. Tim, have you got anybody that can fix the rear window that won't go up in the, in the back of my car? She has no husband, no children, never has had children. Tim, have you got anybody that can uh, come and move some furniture for me? Hey. Christianity with its sleeves rolled up. Mm -hmm. Fellas, I didn't ask you to come up here and sing a special. I didn't ask you to come up here and speak. I'm not asking you to do anything. But in my position as president of our Master's Men, I make one phone call. And our chairman of the projects committee, let's take care of it. That afternoon, that little lady's house was cleaned off. That guy's got uh, three boys in college. One of the wealths, and he's about to graduate. But the other thing is, she gave him a nice donation. And hey, you have a lot of fun doing this. This old guy that sits in the middle of our church always sits right next to the end of the bench, or used to. All right, I'm playing on the edge here saying this. You ready? <laughs> that scares you, right? Yeah. <laughs> And he was one of those that the preacher would say something and he'd say, Amen, Brother Steve. Everybody heard it. You never have anybody here like that, do you? No. Okay. <laughs> but he wasn't there. Tell you, got anybody to come mow my grass? He and his wife lived in a very small mobile home. Uh, I was told that he had plenty of money. But that don't impress me. The man asked. We got fellows available. Amen. We got fellows that uh, jump at a chance to go and do things like that. And as I tell them, it's not what you do that's your salvation. It's what Christ has already done on that cross. That's Amen. our salvation. Amen. When we give a dollar in the collation plate, that is an act of worship. Yeah. Now, when they go and, and mow the grass over there, uh, they, <laughs> I can't say this without laughing. It is so funny. It is funny. <laughs> Go ahead, get ready, because it's going to get funnier. 
that fellow comes to the door, he says, before you leave, let me go look at it, and uh, I'll uh, let you know if it's all right. All right. Vince gets through, or Tracy, or one of the guys that does that, they live on that corner of town, they go take care of it. And what does he do? He comes to the door, and about the time he gets to the door, he looks up, it's all right. He didn't work with your crew. Okay. <laughs> he says, it's all right, and he turns around, it's is nothing over but a smile and a pair of BBDs. Okay, I won't tell you exactly what happened, but they fell to the floor. That guy and his son stood there, and that old guy just pulled up his britches and walked back in the house and closed the door. Mm. But seriously, be prepared for any of you out there doing the Lord's work. He will tickle your sides. Uh, these things happen, yes. It's real life stuff, okay? And the little old ladies that uh, come up and they tug on my elbow and ask me something, I have to get down where I can hear them because my ears are way up here and they're, look, they're looking down and talking to me up here. <laughs> I can't hear that good, okay? I'm an old man. Don't you repeat that. Uh, please, ask your pastor about starting a Master's Men chapter. Okay. Why do you want to start a master's men's chapter? Can't we just have a men's club and not belong? Okay. Two fellows from our church got back a few hours ago from Cuba. Uh, one fella and his wife, uh, two guys. Anyway, one guy and one armed. <laughs> He's so funny about that. I tease him. He can sing good to have this one arm. <laughs> that just sort of tickles him. But he went to Mexico. Yeah with another guy and uh, they took 4,300 shoeboxes, kind of a spin on the American, uh, the uh, Samaritan purse thing. And the guy, the one-armed guy, he gets over there to Mexico and he said, I've always wanted to be a missionary. And they gave him a bundle of tracks. Yeah. He goes with uh, boxes, shoeboxes, and goes down the streets. Those children wanted a track. Now we put a track in each one of the shoeboxes. But please, when you join Masters Men, be prepared. You'll be asked to do a lot of unusual things. May not be seen or lead a uh, group or anything like that. But those are some of the things that Masters Men does. Uh, now let me step on that by notch. You ready? Hang on, preacher. <laughs> We have missionaries, about 165 missionaries scattered all over the world. I have a desire, a heartfelt desire, to see us have, and this, this is a perfect region for that, to see us men get together. Alabama, Georgia would be a great place because of the blueberries and the country life and such as that. And we have some good churches in the Alabama area. But seriously, a missionary home. So when a missionary hits the states, they got an address, they got a mailbox, they got a home. And our ladies, I've already been told by the president of our WAC, Ms. Merle, that uh, the ladies would love to decorate it. And we got some folks, most of our folks are not poor, but we're stingy, okay? <laughs> and they can't do certain things, but they can give a 20 or a 50 or a 100, but maybe like somebody the other day dropped six thousand dollars in the collection plate uh, from their son's death and all that stuff. But whenever the needs are there, God has provided a way. Yeah. We need to surrender. We need to do it sacrificially. Mm. And we are saved to serve. Mm -hmm. And whenever you surrender your heart and life to Christ, <clears throat> be assured, life will definitely get interesting. Amen. Now you may not be able to hear me, but I'll try to speak up. And those fellows on the job side, they think I'm angry whenever I speak loud. No, I'm not. God loves you. And if you've got, if you already got a song picked out, my favorite. Tim Jordan's favorite is Victory in Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
if I have encouraged you in any way tonight, it's because my favorite character in the Bible is Barnabas. Mm. I enjoy Barnabas. He was a man always encouraging people. And I've enjoyed some of you and my relationships because so many of y'all are encouraging. And uh, other than that, Garland and I, we met for the first time that afternoon. That night when he left, I felt like I've been knowing this guy all my life. <laughs> but he is a Barnabas. He was so encouraging. Mm. And uh, we both have carried the burden of the world on our shoulders. Yes, we're guilty. And no, we don't want to do it no more. And I trust you have enjoyed my few minutes of rambling. But seriously, please, let's behave. I love it best when God's people act like God's people. Amen. And let's keep the main thing the main thing. Mm. That prayer that you got going all day, let it buzz in your ear. Good morning, Lord, what can I do for you? And then go about doing something for him every day. Those people that are less fortunate than you, help them, encourage them, encourage us, each other. Reach out. Envision the spiral, okay? It gets bigger, it gets bigger, it gets bigger, and the spiral reaches. For a godly person, that spiral reaches out. For an ungodly person, that spiral is always, wanting to know what's in it for me. Where do I receive any benefits from this? So please, pay attention, behave, honor God with your every thought, deed, and action. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thanking you most of all for your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you will forgive us of any and all sins that have occurred in our life, sins of omission, sins of commission. We pray, Lord, that we'll love more. We pray, Lord, that we will comprehend your will clearly, that we'll conform to it willingly, and that we'll communicate it boldly. Love us, Lord, as we love you. In Christ Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Turn to page 317. 317.